members of the class of 2018. Today, we all celebrate. We look back with fondness over your four years at NYU Shanghai, and we look ahead with optimism to the futures that await you in the years to come. For me, today is a wistful day. It seems like only yesterday that we were meeting every Monday to grapple with the most intellectually challenging elements of global perspectives on society, clickers, and poor class. <laughs> this afternoon, I want to revisit a couple of GPS memories and to share a few thoughts on how you might best use your NYU Shanghai education for your own benefit and for the benefit of others. My first GPS memory is Anthony Appiah. Our video conferencing technology made it hard to understand his voice, but his writing about cosmopolitanism was vivid and compelling. Universality plus difference, deep respect for cultural diversity, a humble recognition that we just might be wrong, and so the world will be a better place if we listen as much as we speak. Back in 2015, that cosmopolitan vision seemed so easy, so natural. It felt as though the world could only become more and more deeply interdependent, more deeply appreciative of diversity and cultural difference. It feels different today. The world is filled with the voices of fear and isolation. Those voices warn us about the dangers of foreign languages, foreign ideas, foreign religions, and foreign races. Those voices invoke patriotism and love of country as justifications for isolation from the unfamiliar. You, the members of the NYU Shanghai class of 2018, provide living proof that those voices are just plain wrong. Isolation enables false stereotypes and destructive prejudice, attitudes that undermine human prosperity. Your example shows us that in contrast, familiarity breeds respect. As you shared your NYU Shanghai experience with classmates from 39 countries, you offered a model for how genuine mutual knowledge diminishes the kinds of misunderstanding that lead to wars of weapons and wars of trade. Even more, you offered us a model for how communities become stronger when they integrate a diversity of races, cultures, and ideas. People who speak with you see that there is no conflict between cosmopolitanism and patriotism. Indeed, as you have acquired an accurate, unvarnished understanding of the world's complexity, of the good and the bad everywhere, it has become easy for each of you to love your own country with its good parts and its bad parts even more than you did when you arrived. My second GPS memory is of The Second Machine Age by Brynjolfsson and McAfee. Remember that video of the talking horses and our conversation about whether technological progress might make human workers obsolete? Today, Seems like everyone is having that conversation as we watch the accelerating advance of ever more capable artificial intelligence. And once again, we know that you, the NYU Shanghai class of 2018, will be important contributors to that discussion. I therefore would like to take this last opportunity to recommend two more books to you books that I think will, you will find helpful as you step out into the world beyond Century Avenue. The first book is Give and Take by Professor Adam Grant of the University of Pennsylvania. 
the book talks about different ways that people interact with each other. Sometimes they behave as what Grant calls takers, people who try to get more than they give. Sometimes they behave as what he calls givers, people who give more than they receive. And sometimes they behave as what he calls matchers, people who are always trying to preserve a fair reciprocal balance, transaction by transaction. Although most people tend to shift around among the three different styles of interaction, Grant finds that most people have a predominant style as takers, givers, or matchers, and their style has an impact on their careers. According to Grant, the research shows that the least successful people in the world are disproportionately givers. They get taken advantage of by takers. Grant's same research shows that the most successful people in the world are also givers. These successful givers do not feel a need to be the biggest winner or even an equal winner in every transaction. They need only to know that they're not becoming worse off over time and that they're not being exploited. These givers are successful because they focus on others' well-being. They ask a lot of questions before they speak. They ask others for advice. They listen carefully and reflect on what others say, and they speak tentatively rather than aggressively. They are successful because other people like them, admire them, trust them, and end up helping them to be successful. I believe that your NYU Shanghai experience has prepared all of you to be successful givers. The key will be for you to maintain three things in the years ahead. You will need to maintain your self-confidence as you face the kind of self-doubts that every successful giver feels. You will need to maintain your patience. As givers, it will take quite a few years for your talents to be properly recognized and rewarded. And you will need to maintain your alertness to protect yourselves against the clever takers and the fakers, the people with pleasant and agreeable personalities who will try to exploit your trust and maybe even to defraud you. The second book that I commend to you this afternoon will not be published until September 25th, but you can pre-order it today. It is called AI Superpowers, and it was written by Kai-Fu Lee, a leader of the AI revolution in the United States and China, and the founder of Sinovation Ventures. Mr. Lee, who happens to be an NYU parent, shared a galley proof of the book with me, and he gave me permission to talk about it with you today. The book provides a brilliant account of the deep learning revolution and explains why the next 15 years are likely to dramatically reduce the number of jobs that exist. The jobs that endure for humans are likely to be more and more jobs that require fine motor skills, subtle abilities at social interaction, creativity, or strategy. Lee describes a comprehensive social response to the job loss challenge. That response includes an expansion of private social impact investing where returns can be measured not only in shareholder wealth, but also in job creation and human connections. And his social response also includes the creation of government-provided social investment stipends, which pay citizens to engage in the socially beneficial activities of care, service, and education. But even more important than Lee's policy ideas are his meditations on the meaning of life. You see, a few years ago, 
he survived a close brush with death. Along the way, he realized that he had badly misdirected his energies toward abstract concepts of having an impact on the world when the only things that really matter in life are love and relationships. The book offers a wise guide to how we as individuals should set our priorities every day, every month, and every year. And it offers an equally wise global perspective on how society might build a future that harmonizes AI's power to think with people's distinctive capacities for love, service, and compassion. Members of the NYU Shanghai class of 2018, you are about to embark on lives to a world that desperately needs you. As you go, let me conclude by sharing a few hopes that we, your teachers, hold for you. May you enjoy the special pleasures of craft, the private satisfaction of doing a task as well as it can be done. May you enjoy the special pleasures of profession, the added satisfaction of knowing that your efforts promote a larger public good. May you be blessed with good luck and also with the wisdom to appreciate when you have been lucky rather than skillful. May you find ways to help others under circumstances when they cannot possibly know that you have done so. May you be patient and gentle and tolerant without becoming smug, self-satisfied, or arrogant. May you build long and loving relationships with people whom you respect, relationships that will be, that will be the key to your enjoyment of full and satisfying lives. May you know enough bad weather that you never take sunshine for granted and enough weather like today that your faith in the coming of spring is never shaken. May you always be able to confess ignorance, doubt, vulnerability, and uncertainty. May you continue to travel frequently beyond the places that are comfortable and familiar so that your appreciation for the miraculous diversity of life grows ever stronger. And may your steps lead you often back to Shanghai, back to Pudong, for you will always be members of the NYU Shanghai family, and we will always be happy to welcome you home. Congratulations. <laughs>